Hey everyone! Today we're going to go over another problem. In this problem, we're going to be looking at this beam and we need to find the internal forces like normal, shear, and the moment at point C. This problem is interesting because it also deals with an unknown tension, so we're going to have to figure out how to take that into account. Tension in the cable, I mean. Okay, so in problem 7-9, we're given this figure, and in this figure, um, we um, we are given this uh, this 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 applied load called P, and we're told that it is equal to eight kilonewtons. Other than that, we don't know what any of the other forces are equal to, but we're given enough information in this problem to figure them out. So, let's start by making a free body diagram, as always. So if we you know um, draw this beam, we'll say it's like that. We have this little upward portion, and then we have this um, tension, right? So we don't have to worry too much about this, but I'll write it like this. Tension, T for tension, right? We have our applied load P. See that P It's going down. And then over here at A, it's a pin. So we're going to have two... Um, we're gonna the reaction force can be split up into two components a y and a x and then we have our point C and this is all split up into 0 0.75 meter segments but the um, um but there's like a wheel here that the oh, that the tension rotates around. And so from the middle point of the wheel to the um, to the middle point of the beam is 0 0.5 meters. And then the radius of this circle is equal to 0 0.1 meters. Now, this is problem is looking a lot better and easier to solve. What we want to do is find out what all of these unknowns are, and then this will help us be able to look at the, um, to take that cut and look at the middle of the beam. So we know what P is, but we don't know what the tension is, we don't know what AY or AX are, but we're in luck, right? Because we have our three equations of equilibrium and three unknowns. And that's perfect because um, we want to have at least as many equations as, as the nuns. Yeah, that's right. So we can start off with the sum of the forces in the x direction. So that's equal to zero. And when we look at this, what do we have? We have t, oh, I'll do that. We have t going in the positive x direction, and ax going in the negative x direction. So we can very simply just say t equals ax. Now if we move on to the sum of the forces in the y direction, we'll have that equal to 0. And since, again, p is going in the negative um, vertical direction, and ay is going in the positive, we'll set these equal to each other as well. But since we know what P is, in this case, we also know that AY is just equal to the same thing, which is 8 kilonewtons. All right, one down, two to go. Okay, then our third equation of equilibrium is the sum of the moments oops, in the, we'll say around point A. And why do we choose point A? Well, like always, you can choose technically any point, but we're gonna choose A because at this point, um, we don't have to worry about AY or AX since those forces are going directly through the point. All we have to worry about is P and T, the tension. And so since this makes it a lot easier because we don't have as many things to deal with and we want to figure out what T is so that we can also figure out what AX is. All right. So now that we're at this point um, and we know that the sum of the forces I'm um, sorry, the sum of the moments at A are equal to zero. Then we can set zero equal to negative T, negative the tension 
times the distance, the perpendicular distance between the tension force and point A, which is going to be 0 0.5 plus that radius, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. And then we have the applied load P. And so we'll take P times the distance between it and the point A, which is three um, segments of 0 0.7 meters. And now, if you are confused, just to clarify, we put a negative sign before the tension times that distance because, uh, because this force right here, oop, this force would be making this uh, clockwise rotation, which when we set our convention, our positive direction is going counterclockwise, which sounds counterintuitive, but... Um, and then if we're looking at P though over here, it is making a counterclockwise rotation, which will be positive. Okay, going back now, we know that P is equal to 8 kilonewtons. So all we have to do is just solve for T. So we can put T, bring T to the other side and T equals P times, um, Oh, wait, sorry. We'll just equal to 18 kilonewtons divided by 0 0.6 because this is 0. Oh, 18 kilonewton meters divided by 0 0.6 meters because this is equal to 0 0.6, right? And then if we solve this, we get T equal to 30 kilonewtons since so meters cancel out. All right, so then... Um, since we have, since we have T equal to AX, then AX will also be equal to 30 kilonewtons. All right, now we know all of our unknowns when it comes to the external part of the system. So the next step is to look at the inside, right? Okay, we're going back up here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this cut right at C, or well, technically just to the left, but that's not actually that important here. And um, yeah, yeah, scratch that part. That's only if you have a load applied there. And so now we choose, do we want to use the left side or the right side of point C? I'm going to go with the right side because on the right side, we just have a simple AY and AX, the reaction forces at point A, they're 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 going at a very easy point along the beam the beam is just a nice sort of um uh, easy re you know rectangular whatever um piece it's just like a stick instead of the other side which has this you know sort of branch going off and then this tension and it makes things a little bit more confusing so you could do the other side but for this example i'm going to show you how it's done using the right side of the beam so um, the right side of, from, from C going right. Okay. So then we're going to do the same thing as we did before, um, but we're going to make a free body diagram of this part and then take the three equations of equilibrium. Okay. For this free body diagram, we have this a little bit shorter beam, right? Oh, we, uh, it doesn't really matter. We have point A here, and we have this AY going up, and this AX going to the left. Okay, and then we have this, is point C right here, and that's where we're taking the cut, right? So then we have to draw our three different pieces. First, we have the, um, the shear force, which is going upwards for just positive convention. And then for the moment, MC, it's also going in the, so it's going in this clockwise fashion, which is positive when we come to t when we take the cut um, on the left side of our system, um, and then we have our normal force. So the normal force is also conventionally speaking going to the left of this beam, and and then we just know this is equal to 0 0.7 meters, the distance between C and A. All right, now we have to figure out what the normal force, the moment, and the shear force 
are all equal to at C. These are all unknowns, but we do know AX and AY. And as I said before, since we have three unknowns in three equations, we can figure them all out. And it's quite simple. It's just the same step. So some of the forces in the x direction are equal to zero, right? That's our first equation. And then we just have AX and NC going in the same direction. So AX is equal to negative NC. And since we know AX is equal to 30 kilonewtons, then NC will be equal to negative 30 kilonewtons. Moving on, if we look at um, the sum of the forces in the y direction, we can find the shear force VC. And so looking here, VC is pointing in the same direction as AY, so we'll do the same thing. VC equals negative AY, which will give us um, VC equal to negative 8 kilonewtons, since we know that AY is equal to P, which is equal to 8 kilonewtons. Last but not least, we're going to try to find the moment. And so the sum of the moments, which we'll take it at C, it was equal to zero. And we'll put here zero is equal to negative MC because we're putting our positive convention as going counterclockwise. But here, MC, which is positive in terms of the way we drew it, is actually going to be negative when we're applying it in the equation. Um, if it's a little bit confusing, you can, you know, leave a comment or email me and I can help you figure that out because I know it can be a little bit hard to understand. But, um, so then we apply this as a negative moment um, in this equation. And then um, for other pieces, we have to take into account a y, not ax because ax is going through the middle of the beam, which is also going through point c. So then we have plus AX, I'm oh sorry, AY, I just said that, AY times 0 0.75 meters. That's the distance between point um, A and C. And easy peasy, we solve for MC uh, is equal to 8 kilonewtons, that's AY as we found earlier, times 0.7 meters. And here we have the moment at C, the internal moment at C is equal to 6 kilonewton meters. And voila, you're done. So you have the moment at C is equal to 6 kilonewton meters, the shear at C is equal to negative 8 kilonewtons, and the normal force at C is equal to ne negative 30 kilonewtons.